Welcome to Wonder High Career Institute Online. My name is Livina. I will be your instructor for the course today. If you are ready for this course, let's get started. The CNA examination has two parts, the written part and the clinical part. The clean, uh, written part has 60 questions and you have to take it within 90 minutes. You can take it at home, which is called remote proctoring, or you can take it at the testing center. The clinical skills test consists of five skills. The five skills consists of three assigned skills and two additional skills. The two additional skills is not going to be written on your scorecard. What you will have on your scorecard is three skills and that three skills is what you're going to perform including the extra two. Now some people ask um, what are the extra two skills? Hand washing and indirect skill. Remember hand washing is not going to be on your scorecard. What that thing means, you know as a healthcare professional, as a CNA to be, that you have to wash your hand even at home, before you eat, before you do anything, you know you're going to wash your hand. That is the way you should have it done on that day. Some people will come, they will not wash their hands, they start with their skills. Please, hand washing is one of your skills. Before you do anything, you have to wash your hand. Then we have a, what is called indirect care. Indirect care is what you, how you talk to your patient, how you greet your patient, all those things count. And you will pass to pass that clinical skill test, you must pass all these five skills. You are allowed to make corrections while performing your skill. Once you identify your skill, you must tell the word NAE that you are correcting your mistake. You may not make any correction once you have completed your skill and then indicate it to the NAE that your skill is complete. Now, the skill is timed and it depends on the particular skill you are asked to perform. Clinical skill test timing. The time for the clinical skills test varies depending on the type of skill you are asked to perform and the time ranges from 31 to 40 minutes. The time frame ranges from shorter to longest time, depending on how long it takes to complete that particular skill. Some students ask um, these uh, skills, um, how do we know how many minutes we need to take or we need to do these skills, whether the, the skills are assigned the, the same time? No. Depending on how long it takes to complete each skill, let's say, for example, very care. You know it's gonna be take it's gonna take longer time than range of motion. So the time assigned for those skills differ. So the skills that is grouped under shorter time, this between five four to five minutes are range of motion hip, knee and ankle, range of motion elbow wrist, range of motion shoulder, ambulation taking pause and respiration. Now, the skills that ranges between 8 to 11 minutes, we call it like moderate time, are changing position, feeding, measuring urine, bed time, transfer, hand and neck care.
Now we have those longer time, the skills that take longer time to complete between 12 to 15 minutes. And we have mat care, brushing the patient teeth, food care, mat care with the dentures that, you know, dental care, dressing, changing occupy bed and catheter care. And now we have the skill that takes the longest time between 17 to 19 minutes, which is perineal care and partial bed bath. The total time for completion of the assigned skill includes three skills, three minutes, sorry, for hand washing, which candidate are expected to perform at the beginning of the first skill. And now five minutes for candidates transition between skills and to review their skills instruction card during the test. So what that thing means, remember I said on your instruction card, you will only see three skills written on that instruction card. But remember, hand washing is one. In that case, two. Now, with the three you have on your scorecard, making it what? Five. When I counted, when I mentioned the time it takes to complete these skills, I did mention what? Hand washing. Then hand washing actually uh, takes about three minutes to complete, so have that one in mind. When you finish one skill, you want to transit from one skill to the other. That time you take in to read your instruction and then to go for the next skill is five minutes. So all these things um, is counted towards the total minutes that you're supposed to have to complete your skill. So the three assigned skills, hand washing and indirect care skill must be completed in the allotted time. The timing of the test ends either when the candidate says that I am done at the end of the third skill or when the time expires. Example of what I'm saying is this again. Hand washing is three minutes plus skill number one plus again skill number two plus skill number three plus transition time. Everything is total the amount the um, time you have to spend for your skill. And remember, I said the time range is between thirty one minutes to. 40 minutes. Now, some students ask, so since hand washing takes about three minutes, what if they exceed that three minutes? Would they count against them? Well, my answer is this. The whole skill you have is what counts. If you take two minutes to finish your hand washing, that's fine for you. That means you're going to the next one. But the thing is, the whole skill you have, you must complete it within the time frame. Now we're talking about what indirect care. So what is indirect care? Indirect care is that care relating to what the resident tribes, communication with the residents, resident safety and comfort, and then infection control. With the exception of hand washing, we evaluated on indirect care skill during the performance of every skill during the clinical skills. During this skill exam, the evaluator will evaluate you on the following indirect care. When you go in inside your resident room to take care of your resident, you want to make sure you greet your resident, you introduce yourself, you address yourself by name. All these things are what? Indirect care. 
you want to provide explanation to the resident about care before you begin and during the what the care you want to ask residents about their preference during the care you want to use standard precaution and facial control measures when you are providing care you want to ask residents about comfort or needs during care or before care is completed you want to promote resident rights during the care and you want to promote what resident safety we're going to talk about a little bit of this you know when we come to um the skill practice indirect care relating to what the resident rights if you want to go to your patient's room what is the first thing you need to do you want to make sure you knock on the door you want to knock on the door so that your patient will know that you are coming. Now you want to greet your patient by name, introduce yourself by name and title. You want to provide privacy by closing the privacy curtain and or door before providing care. Though some skills do not necessarily require closing the privacy curtain, but student may choose to provide privacy such skills are what ambulation feeding hand and neck care measure and record pulse respiration and transfer my 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 student asks why how do you know which one to provide privacy or not my answer to that question is provide privacy unless the patient say no you're not going you're not going to go wrong if you provide privacy when you're you know, doing all this care. But what if you forgot, oh, I, I can't remember is this care or that care? Now you miss the ones that you need to provide their privacy. Provide privacy. That's my advice. Now, you want to cover your patient with what? Bad blanket during and at the end of some of these skills. Example, use of bedpan, catheter care, changing occupied bed, changing of position, dressing, partial bed bath, perineal care, and range of motion, especially the one of the hip, right? Now, we done um, with indirect care relating to resident rights. Remember, when you go in to take care of your patient, you want to do what? Knock on the door. Greet it and introduce yourself. Greet your patient. Tell your patient what you're coming to do. Those ones can't. Remember, it is one of your skills. If you get the four skills right and you fail in direct care, remember, you must pass the five skills. For you to get credit for this uh, yeah, skill uh, exam. Okay, let's take uh, for example, I'm going to take care of Miss Jones. I will knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Good morning, Miss Jones. My name is Miss Livina, and I will be your CNA today. Today we're going to do this. I'm going to do this, 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 right? And before I do that, I want to provide what privacy. Then you close the curtain, you close the door, you take it from there. Now, indirect care relating to what communication. Communicate to the red patient before and during care of what you need to do and what you are doing what skill that you want to do you need to obtain permission explain each step of what you are doing now you've talked to your residents you've you've told her what you want to do right and then communicate to the patient before which is you know i tell the person this is what i want to do now what kind of skill do you want to do oh i want to do what perennial care now you have to obtain permission what does that mean is that okay miss jones that i can do perennial care on you because some of these patients may say you know what i'm i don't want it i don't want any perennial care just get away from here yes 
you want to get permission. Now, you want to explain each step of what you are doing. Okay, Miss Jones, I want you to turn on your left side. I want you to turn on your right side. Can you hold the back blanket for me? Can you raise your head up? Can you put your arm here or here? That is each step you want to tell the patient what you are doing. Okay, Miss Jones, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Remember, this is part of your what? Skill. Now, indirect care relating to what? Resident safety and comfort. I'm telling you, some of us forget that they need to check the bed for what? Locked. This is safety issue. You walk in your bedroom, you want to do perennial care, you want to do transfer, and you didn't check the bed to see if it's locked or not. What if it's not locked and you try to move that patient and the bed rolls? Everybody will be on the floor. You could hurt yourself. The patient will hurt him or herself too. Now, we want to make sure that you lock the bed during that what? Care. You want to put the call light within reach or near resident hand at the end of the scale. Now, the, I said at the end of the scale. But I advise that you can see, give this patient call light. Remember, when you come to introduce yourself, telling your patient what you want to do, that call light is on the floor. Or that call light is just far away from the patient. Are you going to let it stay there until you come back, finish your skill? What if the patient had an emergency or need to get up right away? Or that is something he or she wants to do while you are away washing your hand. That is why I tell my students to give that patient that call like within reach, keep it within reach, and let the person know this is your call like in case if you need me while I'm away washing my hand, call me. You never know when accident will happen. You never know when the patient will need you. So let that patient have that call light within reach while you walk away to wash your hand. If you come back, put the call light uh, aside, finish your um, skills, and then give it back to him or her. All right? Now, when you finish your skill, what's the next thing? Bed should be in a low position at the end of the scale. Again, this is a um, safety issue. Concerning putting the bed low or high, I tell my student, if you know you will not remember to put the bed low after your scale, don't bring it up at all. But remember, you need your back. You want to make sure you are not hurting your own back when you are doing what? You know, taking care of any of your patient. So, the best idea is to raise that bed up at a very good working height so that you will not be bending too low to, to take care of your patient. And again, you will not be what? Hurting your back. But, for safety of this patient, if you will not remember to put this bed down at the end of your skill, remember you are endangering that patient's life. If the patient fall out of that bed, you know what will happen. So try and remember to put that bed low at the end of your skill. This is safety issue. All right. Now. Comfort with the water temperature. When you are doing care that has to do with water, you know, warm water, you know, you want to make sure that you check it. You check the temperature of the water and you want to make sure that the patient checks that water also. The way you feel that water might not be the same way the patient will feel about it. So you want to make sure the person check it and tell you that it is okay. So those uh, uh, skills are catheter care, food care, 
hand and nail care, partial bed bath and perennial care. All these skills, you want to make sure you check the water and the patient also check it. Ask resident about the comfort of what bed pan position or position before you leave that room. You are giving your patient a bed pan. You put the bed pan. You see how the bed pan is, right? When you leave that bed pan on that patient, if it's no well position, it could be causing more harm than what we intended uh, intended use. So ask resident if that bed pan position is okay before you do what you leave that room. Ask resident if he or she wants the privacy curtain left open at the end of your skill, or if the resident would like his or her what reading materials. Like I said, there are some of these skills you don't really need privacy curtain. But to stop bothering your head and brain thinking which skill do I need to provide privacy or not, provide privacy. Tell your resident, I will provide you with privacy and will wash my hand and gather my supplies. At the end of your skill, I will miss Jones, I'm done with my skill. Is there anything I can help you with? Do you want your reading materials, a cup of water? I'm going to open the privacy curtain and I'll wash my hand. So make sure you tell your patients. What about indirect care relating to infection control? This is area where some of us do some mistakes too. Hand washing before and after skills. Some students out of, I guess, anxiety, or maybe because they didn't see hand washing on their scorecard, they think um, they are, uh, they are not supposed to do hand washing. But I think it's just anxiety related. So you must wash your hand before and after each skill. You want to make sure you wash your hand before you touch that your patient. The, before you put on your glove, you want to make sure you wash your hand. After you remove your gloves, wash your hand. Some student has bad. Why, why should we wash our hand if we have to continue with the skill after you remove glove? Yes, you have to. Do you know what has entered into that glove and get in touch with you that you don't know? What if that glove is that kind of glove that is powdered? For example, you remove it and you have powder on your hand. Are you going to use the powdered hand to continue your care? Let's say you have your powder, you remove your glove, your hand is powdered, right? And Ms. Jones says, oh, please, could you give me a cup of water? Then you use a powdered hand and give Ms. Jones a cup of water. You must wash your hand after you remove your glove. Now, avoid placing bed pan directly on the wall, over bed table. Over bed table, that's your walking station, walking site. Remember, over bed table, this patient is use it for, you know, that's where they use as their um, good trays when they are eating and everything. Bed pan is bed pan. You know what it's used for. Don't put it on over bed table. Avoid holding clean or dirty linen against your clothing. Avoid placing linen directly on the floor. Avoid holding pillow fully against clothing. Avoid shaking linens. Avoid placing linen directly on the floor, except when used as a barrier during food care. Remove gloves without contaminating self. All these things, the NAE will observe. Don't think that the only skill you are doing is making bed, feeding patient. You must observe these infection control measures. What is opening procedure? 
opening procedure is what you are supposed to do before starting your skills especially to maintain the what patient right and this applies to what all skills knocking on the door before you enter the room applies to all skills greeting your patient introducing yourself by name and title explaining the, to the resident what you are doing obtaining consent by asking that patient is he okay to perform the skill this applies to all the skills now i said earlier when we were talking about the safety you want to make sure that the bed is positioned at a comfortable working hat to promote what good body mechanism you want to make sure that the beds are locked you want to make sure that you provided what privacy by closing the privacy curtain and or door during care wash your hands you must wash your hand before touching your patient or handling any clean linen you must place your clean linen your supplies on a clean surface so over bed table you are going to use for um, for placing your linens you must place barrier on that over bed table all right gather your supplies and then i said the first thing you want to do after you introduce yourself you tell your patient whatever you want to do you wash your hand the first thing you need to do before you gather your supplies gather your barrier and place on what on your over bed table so that when you gather your supplies you gather your sheets um, um, hospital gown linens then you have a clean space to put it some students start gathering their supplies before they take yeah, their barrier for the over bed table so now they are struggling how to open the barrier or the to put on a bed table. Do that first. Now, when you finish your skill, you do what is called what? Closing procedure. What is closing procedure? When you finish your skill, always perform a closing procedure to maintain what? The resident's safety and comfort by making sure that the environment where you work is clean. Make sure you clean your mess, right? Wheelchair locked if the patient is sitting on a wheelchair. Bed locked after each skill the call light must be within reach at the end of your skill bear in a low position at the end of your skill ask your resident about comfort by offering magazine tv remote water all those things now open your privacy curtain review your skills and make any corrections Wash your hands, document. If you have skills that need documentation, make sure you wash your hand before you document. You cannot use dirty hand and pick that pen, that paper to document. You must wash your hand before you do what you document. Now after your skill, you wanna review. Think about your skills. Did I make any mistake? Is there anything that I didn't do? If that question uh, answer is yes, tell the NAE. I made a mistake here. I wanna do I wanna correct that. Okay? Don't think oh NAE is not seeing me. She or he is seeing you. Make your correction. Now, after your correction, tell the NAE that your skill is done. Please note, 
if you forget to tell the energy before you say your skill is done and maybe you remember oh i didn't give the patient call light that is over you can you can't get credit for that That work surface is an area where work of a particular nature is carried out. Now, during your skill, your supplies are kept on overbed table when carrying out all those specific tasks. The overhead table now is your work, work station or work area. I've mentioned earlier, before you put your supplies on the overbed table, make sure it is covered with a barrier. A barrier could be chalk, disposable pad, or it could be a towel. This is to avoid what? Contaminating the supplies with the dirty surface. Immediately after washing your hands, before you gather your supplies, please spread your work surface with a barrier so that you will have a clean surface to place your supplies. No, um, putting on gloves, removing gloves, it's not like no PPE. It's not like one skill you have to do. But remember infection control. If you don't remove your glove right, that that is you losing points on infection control. Wearing glove is one of the measures used for infection control. When using gloves, you must remember that the outside of that glove is contaminated. Wear glove when contact with blood, mucous membrane, non intact skin that may be contaminated. Change glove when moving from a contaminated body side to a clean side. Change glove when it is torn. Wash your hand and put a clean glove. I have a question from one of my students last time asking why do we put gloves on when we are making beds, occupied bed? Alright. Yes, you have to put gloves on. Why do you want to change that bed in the first place? If that bed, that bed sheet is clean, do you think we have to go and change it? No. So you're not going to change a clean sheet of a resident. So the sheet you're going to change is probably the dental one. The one that is soiled with poo, with pee, with something else. So why won't you put on gloves to change that sheet? Now I tell my students, put on glove, tuck in the dirty sheet inside, by the time the patient moves, you already seen on the bed and see if it's visibly soiled or not. You take it out, you push it inside when we're doing um, occupied bed. That, bed. that sheet is considered dead, right? Take it off, wash your hand again. Put on clean glove and take clean sheets. Now you put your clean sheet with a clean glove. When you move the patient on, the, on her other side, to get the other side fixed. Remember you have your glove, so you can take the dirty glove out. Now, after that, take that glove out, wash your hand. Now you can walk with, with your hand with that glove because the one you're going to deal with now is what? Clean sheet. But, so I asked, but I watched some videos, there was no glove. Yes, but I'm saying yes, it's necessary to put on glove. All right. Now, you need to know the steps on how to remove glove. Remember, when you're removing your glove, you don't want to touch the um, front of the glove, uh, glove with your hand. So you have to know the steps of removing your glove. Let's talk about hand washing technique. Remember you have to wash your hand before you start your skill. 
As a nurse aide, you are expected to wash your hand before and after physical contact with the resident, before you put on your glove, after you remove your glove, and when your hands are visibly soiled. For the skill, you have care plan. Remember, the hand washing is not on your scorecard. Scorecard, I mean, is something like this that will have the three skills that you're supposed to do. Hand washing will not be one of them. But hand washing is one of your what? Skill. That's the fourth one. Indirect care, the fifth one. So there is no instruction for what? Hand washing. You are expected to wash your hand at the beginning of the test. Now, hand washing during the skill can be what? Simulated. Please follow instruction from what? The NAE. Like I earlier said, the time for the um, hand washing is about three minutes. You know the supplies we need, the soap dispenser where you get your soap, paper towel, trash container, and the sink, of course, where you're going to wash your hand. When you are doing your hand washing, please don't allow your uniform to touch the sink. This is critical. If you are wearing long sleeve, which I advise anybody coming for the exam, please don't wear a long sleeve. But if you mistakenly wear hands long sleeve, please push it up, push it up, your arms four to five inches. If you are wearing a watch, push it up or remove it. So we already know how to do hand washing. That we're gonna perform when we're doing these skills. But what I want to talk, say about the hand washing here, you must use friction to spread soap to your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds. 20 seconds is not the whole time that you're gonna wash your hand. That is the time you are using to lather that soap on your palm everywhere. This is 20 seconds. People use happy birthday. People use so many ways to count the 20 seconds. All right? This is 20 seconds, not the entire hand wash. Now you want to make sure you clean the front, the back, between fingers, cortical, under your nails, wrists, under fingers, and against your palm. Please rinse your hand. While you are raising your hand, keep your fingers pointing down at all times. And I tell my student, when you're drying your hand, let's say you wash your hand, you keep your hand this way and you want to dry, what happens? The water is just what? Dripping, going down way. Put your hand this way and start drying what? From the tea. Some people dry, dry from here, they go over here. Remember there are part of this hand I didn't wash. You use paper towel to go over here and go over here. Now introducing Ajemin jams from this side up to the ones you've already washed. So start drying from the tip of your hand and walk your way through. When you want to turn off the faucet, Remember these hands are not clean. You must use paper towel to turn off that faucet. Don't allow your uniform to touch anywhere uh, around the sink. And if for any reason you have made a mistake and your hand mistakenly touched the faucet, please tell the NAE so that you either start over again, whatever instruction she gives, you have to do it. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you do like what you watched and turn on your notification button so you don't miss out our next video. Follow us on Instagram and we'll see you next time. Thank you and God bless you.